This lecture is a brief look at some wave dynamics, specifically what happens when we apply F equals MA to a transverse wave that is propagating through a one-dimensional medium. Okay, now what is meant by a one-dimensional medium in this context? Well, the medium itself, we'll envision it as a spring, only has length, but it doesn't have thickness associated with it. So if I use one of the springs that I've used in some demonstration lectures, we're gonna ignore the thickness of the spring in this direction and ignore its thickness in this direction. We're only gonna consider its length. We're gonna apply F equals MA to such a situation for a transverse wave that is propagating through this medium. We will not do this, however, for a longitudinal wave. It's not that important for our purposes. Okay, so a little bit of wave dynamics. We're gonna apply F equals MA to a transverse wave propagating through a one-dimensional medium. Just to give us a little bit of context here, we'll envision this as a spring with no thickness. Okay, now if you take such a spring and you stretch it out, for example, between two people, each person is applying a force to the spring. The value of that force called the tension is the same, and it's the same at all points along the spring. So let's say that a person pulls in this direction with a tension T, and the person pulls in this direction with a tension T. The two tensions have to be the same, because if they weren't, for example, then the spring would start accelerating in one direction or the other. It's not, it's just stationary on the ground. And then as the wave itself propagates through the spring, the value of the tension does not change. Now I'm gonna draw this out for a situation involving just a single transverse wave pulse because it's easy to describe if I do. However, the derivation I'm about to go through, it applies to any wave form that is propagating through such a medium, for example, say a simple periodic wave. But as I said, let me just draw this out for a single wave pulse. When I draw this diagram and you repeat it in your notes, make sure that you draw a nice large diagram. Okay, so right here is a nice big single wave pulse like so, propagating through this spring with a speed V in this direction. Once again, we seek to apply F equals MA to such a situation and derive an expression for the speed. In order to do so, let's focus in on a very small section of the spring. So let's say that right here is a small section of the spring that has a mass delta M associated with it and a length delta L associated with it. Okay, I'm gonna divide it in half and construct the following diagram when I do. Okay, now both sides of this little pie wedge, if you will, are symmetrical. And then let me go ahead and define an angle. Here and here associated with each section. Let's write each section here as an angle delta theta. Okay, right here is a small section of the spring, delta L over two. Here's another small section of the spring, delta L over two. And then what I'm drawing here is a circular arc so then therefore there's a radius of curvature R associated with that circular arc. And now what I do is I apply the force vectors, tension from either side of the spring to this point right here. When I do, the tension vector is tangential to that point. So then therefore, symmetrically, I have one tension vector in this direction, T, and another tension vector in this direction, T, like so. Once again, the T's are the same. Okay, in order to add up those tension vectors by using F equals MA, I'm gonna break them into components. I'm gonna break them into a component like so that is parallel to the length of spring, that is parallel to this line, for example, and then perpendicular here. Same thing over here on this side, parallel to the length of spring, and then perpendicular like so. Okay, now right here in between green and blue is a right angle and over here on the left as well. 
So then therefore, if you do a little bit of geometry, you can ultimately show that this angle here on the diagram is the same thing as this angle delta theta. That's also the case over here on this side of the diagram. That is this angle here is also the same thing as delta theta. And now let's go ahead and add up the green force vectors. Okay, first of all, let's add up the following. T cosine delta theta in this direction and T cosine delta theta in this direction. Notice that those two components, T cosine delta theta, cancel each other out. There's no acceleration of this mass in this horizontal direction on the diagram. So the T cosine delta thetas cancel. However, right here is a T sine delta theta that points in this direction. Right here is a T sine delta theta that points in this direction. There's two of them, add them together. So 2t sine delta theta. Okay, what does that equal? Well, it equals mass times acceleration. The acceleration, however, is a centripetal acceleration. And the reason for that is because as the pulse propagates through the spring, the delta m here mathematically behaves as if it's tracing out a circular arc of length delta l. So then therefore, I'm gonna write ma here on the right-hand side of the expression as mv squared over r. So once again, we're just adding up here to 2t sine delta theta is one pointing like so, the other one pointing like so. This then equals mass times acceleration, and it's a centripetal acceleration. And then what we're going to do is just simply solve for the speed v. However, when I do solve for the speed v, I have to write the speed in terms of quantities associated with this pulse that are easy to measure. So then therefore, I'm going to get rid of a number of things in this expression. The first thing I'm gonna to start to get rid of is the angle delta theta. Right off the bat, let's make a small angle approximation. As the pulse propagates through the spring, the angle delta theta here on the diagram is extremely small. So let's make a small angle approximation. Let's specifically say that sine of delta theta is about the same thing as delta theta. So then therefore the left-hand side of the expression becomes this. So, okay, and now we have the angle delta theta, either one here, it doesn't matter which. Let's go ahead and write the angle in terms of radian measure. Recall that angle is equal to arc length divided by radius. So right here on the left, for example, is the arc length of delta L over two, and then we have the radius R associated with this imaginary circle that the delta M is propagating through, if you will, as the pulse propagates on the spring. So now what I'll do is take this expression for delta theta, it's just arc length over radius, and then plug it into here, and as I do, stuff starts to cancel out. Okay, so I have two times t times delta theta, which is delta L over two r, equals then delta M b squared over r, like so, and then as I said at this point, stuff starts to cancel. So the twos cancel out here and here, and the r's cancel here and here. And then in my next step here, what I'm gonna do is take the length delta L and move it down to the denominator on the right-hand side of the expression. That is like so. And now right here is mass over length. For those of you that have already seen mass over length, those of you that are enrolled in honors physics AB, keep in mind that this is the linear density. For those of you enrolled in physics AB, this is the first time that you're seeing it, Linear density is one-dimensional density. It's mass divided by length. Now for a normal three-dimensional object, density is mass over volume. This is the one-dimensional version of that, which is mass over length. It's referred to as linear density. So the linear density is referred to as mu. It's mass over length. It's the one-dimensional version of density. So then therefore it's delta M divided by delta L in this derivation. That appears right here in the expression. So then therefore the tension is equal to the linear density multiplied by the speed squared, and now you just solve for the speed. So divide by the density and take the square root, and when you do, you end up with this expression here. 
In general, when applying F equals MA to a situation involving the propagation of a mechanical wave, you ultimately end up with an expression that looks like this. This is the simplest version of it. Square root of something that has to do with the rigidity of the medium, in other words, how much force is being placed upon it, divided by properties of the medium itself. In the context that we've seen here in some demonstration videos, when the tension that is applied to the spring is a greater value, in other words, if you stretch out the spring to a greater distance between the two endpoints and thereby increase the tension, you then thereby increase the speed. In general, however, for a mechanical wave, the speed of a mechanical wave always has an expression that looks like this.